Morning, it's Piggy Power, everyone. This is a fuel pump for a Citroen Saxo or Peugeot 106. About to change it, and I thought, you know what? Some people might want to see how they do that, so let's do that. <laughs> Okay, you're definitely going to need one of these, which is a fuel pump. You can pick them up from anywhere between about £25 to £50, £60 on eBay. Uh, new, uh, lots of money, but you probably can get them new. Depends how determined you are. The reason you're going to change it is probably because the old one doesn't work. Yeah, you've either had some non-starting, some running issues, and if you've got non-starting issues and the pump's making weird noises, turn the ignition on, you don't hear the pump go, you've got a problem. If you turn it on, you don't hear the pump, and then you bash the back seats, these are the back seats, by the way, with the floor, and it kicks in, or you kick the tank and it kicks in, you're looking at your pump. Uh, other ways to test the pump is to get under here, and as we look at the plug, just check it's got 12 volts running to it. If it doesn't, you've got a different problem. But we did, and it still doesn't work, so pump. Right, first thing, remove the rear seats. You just lift up and pull. Kind of just lift, and just, just, there we go. Lift at the back, pull, and then kind of lift off the little clippy things at the front. I'm trying to do it one-handed. It's not the easiest. Just get it in there, there we go. So just lift at the back and pull out from the front and you'll have the seat removed. Put it somewhere useful. With the rear lower bench seat removed, you'll need to take this cap off. Okay, you can try and get your fingers in there. It's probably going to hurt them, so don't do that. I'm just going to fold this back a bit, this carpet. Give us a bit of space and a bit of room. Hey, you want a screwdriver or something similar, lever bar? Now you can sometimes just get in there with it, like that. But sometimes you might need to give it a bit of a smack. Okay, as you can see, we've got plugs and stuff going on here. We're going to use the same lever or screwdriver, as long as it's not too big. I'm going to flip the clip out and show you. A couple of wires here. You're going to make some common sense to these thick wires of the pump, and the thin wires are just to tell you how much fuel you've got. So you want to get this, uh, this plug out. You see it's got a little clip down there. And you just have to push the clip back and lift the plug up at the same time. So it's quite hard to do one-handed. So I'm just going to put you down. I'm just going to push in that clip. The little screwdriver is probably easier, and just pull the plug gently up, and there comes out the plug. So you can just put a multimeter on that. Check you've got 12 volts when you put the ignition when you um, turn the ignition on. It will prime. Check you've got that, and when you're cranking, you should also have 12 volts across those two, the two middle pins, basically two fat wires. One's an earth, one's power. If you haven't, you've got a different issue. If you have, and the pump just still doesn't go, yes, it's definitely your pump. Now you've got these, what some might people say are sort of intimidating clips, but you just need a little set of pliers to clip them back together. And to take them apart, you can use a similar pair of pliers or just a little screwdriver and just go click, click. Little screwdriver. I'm just going to get in on that clip and just twist on the screwdriver till the clip comes undone. Same thing with that one. Probably easier from this direction. Just get in, give the little screwdriver a twist and the clip comes undone, and then it's loose, see? Now we've got a loose clip, and we should have a loose pipe. Now obviously there's gonna be fuel in here, so my suggestion would be if you hadn't already at this point, because you've been testing, now disconnect the battery just in case. We don't want no boom booms. All these other cables are just annoying. Um, don't damage them though. So you can do a couple of things here, try and get a little screwdriver in, try and leave the pipe off. You can try and also twist the pipe. So you're trying to just give it a little of a twist, a pair of pliers, just to give it a twist. We'll release the little seal, essentially, that it's created for itself. Then get a pair of pliers for that. Like this, a pair of long nose pliers. Just give it a twist, and that'll help get that pipe off. And you'll almost hear it go plunk. And then you can just, there we go, there goes a little bit of fuel. So do be aware, don't be smoking. Don't be making sparks at this point. You do need pressure, but it's the fumes that will go. And it does stink, which is lovely. There we go. Okay, and you can try and push your pipes just out of the way for now. Let's take the clips off so we don't lose them down the back of this car. Never to be found again. So you're going to lose a little tiny bit of fuel. It's not, it's not the end of the world. Don't panic. All right, let's keep them out of the way. And now, 
it's not a bad idea to get a bit of rag and just give this a wipe out so that none of the crud here goes into the tank. There is filters, but just try and do that. So with that all a bit cleaner, you now need to remove that plastic ring with the ridges on it. A couple of schools of thought. Why don't you use a scri strike through, scrape, scrape, scrape through. You use a scrape through. You use a strike through, it's got a metal end, punch or something like that with a pretty blunt end so you don't damage the plastic and you hit the ridges and it comes undone eventually you can turn it by hand there are some specialist tools out there quite expensive generally for the bigger ones i found sometimes quite successful using an oil filter wrench like this one which are about four or five pounds on ebay about 10 quid on amazon probably about 35 pounds at halfords that can work if you've got access i'm just going to show you what probably everyone has got access to which is something to hit and something to hit it with and we'll give that a go and see how we get on right so let's see how we get on with this obviously trying to hit it across to the left anti-clockwise and you can see it's spinning you don't want to damage the plastic obviously pipe work. You'd be surprised how many times you need to give it a smack round before you can do the last bits by hand. So now we can do the last bit by hand. Right okay so this is the point where it's going to pop up a bit on you. There's a bit of a spring in it and it might be a bit tricky at this stage. It can be very tricky at this stage to try and get pipes out of the way. Don't want to damage them get this ring out as well at the same time. There's not much room, I have to admit, on the Saxo to do this. On the 306s, there's loads of room. Okay, that's out. Now, take note of orientation as well. So we're at the back, uh, sorry, we're facing the back here. So this is the front, this is the back. Notice the orientation. You will notice that sometimes pumps do have an arrow of orientation. Can't see one on this one, which is a bit annoying. Sometimes they do. Um, but just take note, you know, okay, so it's there, take a picture, maybe even you could, you know, okay, so we take a little screwdriver and we just scratch a little edge there, and an edge there, and an edge there, and we know that they're all going to be facing that. And then, we try and lift it out. So it's going to have the little sock, the little pickup, and it's going to be full of fuel, if you've got fuel in your tank. So you can see the pickup is going to the left. So we don't want to just lift it up and ram it out and break it, even though it might be broken already. Wow, it is a full tank as well, which is not great. It quite stinks. Okay, so I'm going to put this down. I'm going to show you with both hands. Okay, so we're trying to manoeuvre this out. So you can't bring it straight up, as I've mentioned. So you've got to bring it out at an angle, and you've got to do it slowly to allow the fuel to drain out of it back into the tank. Quite a tight fit. There we go. And there's fuel going everywhere now. So that's just fabulous. Okay. So let that baby just drip away. It's probably a really good idea to about 20 seconds ago grab myself some rag. That's a really full tank. Okay. It stinks of fuel. Right. Take it out. rag you use to soak up any fuel um, I mean diesels included but petrol is particularly uh, a bit of an issue obviously because it's petrol is just dispose of it correctly the fumes can stick around for a while and that is an issue because they go boom boom the new one do you remember how it came out because that's quite a good thing to do remember how it came out basically it came out like this didn't it so we need to put it back in in the same way the sock gets a little bit crushed the little sock there the filter give it a little squeeze and a wiggle and goes in just like that now do it slowly because as you might have just seen a little bit of fuel just pops up because it was so full of fuel that as it's displacing some fuel it's a uh, it's pushing it up now, there's a rubber seal around the edge there, and you want to make sure that seats in really nicely and creates a proper seal that doesn't pinch or doesn't bulge out the sides as you're getting that in. And then we're going to get our ring and try and fill it 
fill it, filter it back in around all these lovely pipes that are getting in the way. It's fine, totally okay. So we're going to go in at the back first, pushing down on the pump so we can make the space to get the ring in. <laughs> Wiggle it down. Definitely, definitely start this by hand. You can go quite a long way with it by hand. Keeping an eye on the orientation, so we've made the marks and we're keep keeping the pump and pick up in line with the marks. Do it up until you can't do it up anymore. Be cautious with this edge, by the way. It's usually very sharp, so if you've not got very tough skin, just be aware of that. Might be worth wearing a pair of gloves. You know, be safe. Not like me. And that's what you're also going to notice. As you do this up, you might have just seen that happen. I can turn this and it turns the pump as well. So you can do it. You don't need any help from anyone else, but you just have to be aware of that. What can help is just putting a bit of downward pressure on the pump and the pickup as you turn this. Like that. And it needs to be tight, but not massively, you know, if you're not, you're not looking to hold on a steering wheel here. Just hold it in and stop all the fuel coming out. So now we're going to tap it round. In the opposite direction. You shouldn't have to put many smacks of a hammer on this, by the way. If it's tight, it's tight. If you start breaking off these ridges, like I've just chipped an edge of a one there, all right, admittedly, then you're probably tight. So that's good. Just have a look above. Yep, orientation still as it was before. I'll show you that, our successful shot. There we go. And now we need to get our hoses back on. Don't forget your little funky clips, all right? So funky little clip number one went on there. Let's wiggle her back in. And then give her a wiggle on. Wiggle and push, wiggle and push. There we go. Fancy clip number two. Don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid. They won't hurt you. Wiggle it on, wiggle it on, wiggle it on. There we go. Okay, how are, you, how are we looking? Can you see what's going on? Can you see what's going on? Hopefully you can. Then, a little pair of pliers, click, click. Now, the type of pliers you want are going to look something like this, but any pliers that do something similar and can get in here will do the job. They are, there is an orientation to them, and I always forget which way around they go, if I'm totally honest with you. But when they work, you just squeeze it together and it goes click. Like that, did you hear that? Squeeze it together and it goes click. Click. Now those two are sealed, and you have to worry about how tight it goes, etc. Final job to do is plug it in. Right, now before you faff, we're trying to get this back on, a little bit of WD-40 does assist you. Check it works. Okay, battery's connected. Let's turn the ignition on and hope to hear the beautiful sounds. Oh, I heard that. Let's let's move let's move the little ma I don't know about macro on your camera, but this is macro microphoning. Ah, do you hear that? That's a good sign. Now, hopefully, we twist the key and this starts. Yay! Oh, good opportunity just to check the leaks. Any leaks? No. Right. Any leaks? No leaks. This is good. Put the cap back on. Put the seat back on. Go and have a cup of tea, celebrate your victory. Go and have a Raz in your Saxo VTR. Thanks for watching. Click. Subscribe.